Well, we just got up here, and uh, the Forest Service is already here with their cop, so we're going to go talk to him. I'm saying, yeah, for now, we can't do that. But we should be able to, unless it's written somewhere in your documentations that says, and, and I'm not talking policy. You can go on the Forest Service thing all, right. they've had that for years saying that we can't do it. We've made them take their signs down or we're going to sue them. And they knew that what they did was wrong by spending $800 on taxpayers' money to say that we can't pan when in fact we can't. Well, let's move forward to the withdrawal with the, with the presidential proclamation. What okay. is, is withdrawal? That your under, well, we're, we're still under study. We have three years of study to go through that. That's for the uh, monument plan, but as soon as the proclamation went in effect, it didn't help me understand. Well, I'm, okay. if I could interject here, and this is this is what, what we do is, okay. I'm the president of America. Would you want to sit down? I'm sure if you, you want. You can all go sit down instead yeah, of standing around. Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure you're probably kind of warm in that. Oh, no, this is every day where... The, um, now, we're not going to get in trouble if we start sitting down and about 75 people come around. <laughs> you know, well, I'm not trying to <laughs> I am here to do education and violation prevention. Is that fair enough? That's fair. I also I'll support cops very much. Well, well, Nick, you you to go. Guys, we're going to have to do it one at one at a time talking here. I'll talk that's, to you. That's because, fine. Uh, no, no, we're talking, so if you want to come, because he said he's pretty familiar. And what I'm trying to do is get briefed on your understanding. Sure. And then the, there is one caution now. I'm going to ask that you not do the raffle here or any kind of solicitation of donations here. You can do that off-site because you, that anytime you offer services or um, sell things, you need a permit. Right. So that, well, when you offer stuff, you have a raffle. code for no, that. The raffle is yeah, it's totally legal. Hey, guys, the, uh, yeah, hold on. We can't have five or ten people. Well, I've got, I've got, I've got all the time. time. I've got all the time in the world for you guys. All right. So, well, but that's. I'm just trying to tell our guys. So maybe we can go sit down at picnic tables. Okay, that's fine. But if we could just, I mean, all the questions will be answered, guys. It's just going to be a lot more difficult if we can't engage in a conversation. I'm going to call them for that. How many people are you guys think are out there? I'm normally. It's very, very low key, and I'm normally on the north side of the forest. Uh, you know, the big thing is also, uh, you, you notice the little lock ends that people do for stream alteration. You notice that water wheel murky. That's our biggest. Well, but that's, I see, see over that's, here. that's not, you, you guys don't do that because you want the water flow, but um, yeah, this, we place, don't put can the dirty be, yeah, this place can be hacked from here all the way oh, down to the uh, fire. Well, I would think that that's a matter of interpretation as far as whether that's even classified as stream alteration. I mean, I understand what you're saying, right. but... Oops, a little wobbly, isn't it? Uh, maybe somebody sit on that end a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, why don't we go I, I don't, don't want to end up on I can see eight sets of legs being busted. <laughs> 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 well, I think the, the primary question that I have, and this has it pertains to the National Monument, 
is it's one thing That's for understood. Mr. Obama to make a declaration that this is going to happen, and then it's another thing that if he's followed the legal procedures to make that a valid act. And so what I'm asking from you is to provide any form of documentation because we've had three people on this for a week mm -hmm. and there isn't anything. And so if you can provide me something that shows that Obama has signed and, and done this and that it is a valid act as per the United States Constitution. And I'm not testing the right. constitutionality of his EO. Right. That's not what I'm saying. Presidential proclamation. Let's, okay. Let's call Whether, it that instead of a executive order. It's still an executive action. I would agree. By by definition and by legal right. definition, it's still an executive action. So right. I'll, I'll not use the word order if that's what right. you don't uh, prefer. So if you can provide to me something that shows that the executive action that he performed on this puts all of this regulation into effect today, then then I think that we have a valid debate right. over that. But we have been unable to find anything of the sort. Um, that he has actually done that, which would institute whatever regulations that he wants to put in place as, yeah. as a part of that act. So mm -hmm. right now it is still in the public comment phase, which typically the way that procedure works is you do all these public comments and everybody gets to give their input. Right. Then they go back and they sit down and they go, okay, we've got all of these comments, everything that comes in. Now we have to determine what's in the best interest of the public because we're still a representative republic. They get to voice their opinion. They get, you know, redress of their grievances, all that kind of stuff. Right. That's the process that we're in right now. So everything that we have researched right now shows that the that it's not finalized. So I know the Forest Service stance is that you can't do this and you can't do that, but it's not backed up by anything that President Obama has done or law. Well, so if you could provide something that well, shows that then we can talk. I've read the presidential proclamation, right, mm -hmm. and I put it on my phone, right, and it has the date it was in effect and signed, all right, and it's filed with the government printing office in the Federal Registry, all right, but it says, one clause I did read, it said basically if there were ex existing rights, it's not going to interfere with those existing That's rights. That's correct, and that has and so, to do with the 1872 and 1866 Mining Act. Um, this is a part of the, right. uh, this is a part of the public domain, and this, this may help you a little bit too, is the public domain is something that is open to mineral entry and exploration. It's what California was founded on. I mean, California wouldn't be the, the phenomenal sixth largest economy in the world if it wasn't founded on mining. That's mining is what created California. But as a part of that public domain, which this particular spot that we are standing in right now is part of that public domain, and what he's referring to in that executive act is that it can't interfere or supersede any other rights has to do with those mineral rights in the public domain, meaning that the people have a fundamental right under the 1872 Mining Act to come in here and they can put a pan in the water and they can pan for gold. Now if you go up a certain area or you get into wild and scenic or you get into these other right. things, then obviously there's withdrawn areas. There's a PL-359, which is the... Well, let's not use acronyms because I'm not good on them. So well, I'll, them to I'll, I'll explain what that is. PL. The P PL, I don't know what the hell Public, public, public land, right? Public the 359 law. is the, the power withdrawal that they have, and that is where you have you know, a, a dam that has a electrical turbines or whatever it is, but they call that a power withdrawal. And they withdraw that area from specific mining activity. Um, but the PL359, and that's what they call it, is, and it, I'll use the power withdrawal because that's really what it is, that doesn't exclude the public domain in being able to go down there and actually pan or even file a mining claim. And I'll give you an example is up on the McCalmney River, which is just south yeah, of Amador, well, East Amador. Exactly. Right. We just filed, Jerry and I, uh, just last week. A claim on that river right. that is listed as what they call that PL 359 and it's a power withdrawal because there's a dam right up right. above there that doesn't preclude anybody from filing a mining claim or actually mining it it just means that you have to go through an extra process to file a mining claim it doesn't prevent anybody from going down and actually mining it okay well I'll tell you what I'm here for is because it's an event right and there was planning on it being upwards of it said up to 200 people Right, over 75 people, you'd need a permit. The other issue I have is with the raffle. 
I'm not here to write any kind of mining tickets. I just had some people um, over there and they were pretty belligerent with me. They had their sluices out and everything else and I'm asking for violation prevention. Sure. Which is basically my understanding, basically it's saying withdrawn for you know locating and everything else makes it a presidential proclamation. Now I, I'm not gonna write tickets that, today. Hold on. Go ahead. Fish. Sorry. I'm not gonna write tickets today for activity. All right, certain activities, certain ones. If they do happen, I, I would take enforcement action, which is uh, the the um, you know, the raffle offering goods and services and everything else. Um, you know, I know this is an ongoing issue, but from my understanding and basically what it's been put to me is that it's withdrawn, meaning you cannot do these kind of explorations, locating and everything else. I'm not a lawyer, and we might have a lawyer here, but you know, <laughs> and those things are all interpreted by the court. Sometimes. Tickets I, are written and they're thrown out. Background. Right. Sometimes tickets are written, they're thrown out. Doesn't mean the ticket was was good or bad. Right. It's just we're not going to. But do also, that. is as well is ignorance of the law. And I, I'm not trying to right. demean you or right. to be derogatory in any nature. But your ignorance of the law is no excuse for you to violate somebody's rights as well. And I would have to intentionally, and that's what I'm not here to do. Well, but in, but see, be, just because you don't understand the legal aspects of a PL-359 or the public domain, you're going off of something that somebody told you, and we're going off of actual documents and facts and the law. And so that's what we're trying to do. And we're not trying to do it right. in a demeaning or a bemoaning way. That's not the intent here. And I apologize if somebody was kind of an ass. No no one that's here. <laughs> <Okay>. over there <laughs> refused to present tra identification. Um, yes, I was in uh, investigative. Uh, it was an investigative detention. They wouldn't follow my orders. Okay. Um, but I, that, think, I think what, unfortunately, um, because of the rights that are slowly being taken away, especially in this area, People get people are the, the levels are, are getting very frustrated. And that's Especially when talk, you have right? to spend sure. and I millions it. and millions of dollars in attorney fees for something that we have a right over. It gets very frustrating that we're we're actually using <coughs> what money we got our tax dollars our tax to fight against our own tax dollars. Well, how about this over uh, something that we we right. should have a right to do? <laughs> well, think about this: uh, the Forest Service. Uh, you come up from uh, you know probably near the El Dorado National Forest. Yeah. Uh, the, the force there sued by the OHV area and then sued by the environmental. Litigation on both sides. And this is money that could have been spelled out, spent elsewhere. But it yes. gets tied up in the courts and it seems yeah. to be that that is, and this is just me talking, this isn't, this isn't Officer Marcus of the Forest Service, <laughs> that we, we spend a lot of time on these things. Um, and it's our legal right. I mean, we might not like the money, the fact that money is spent that way. Um, but mm -hmm. my understanding, basically, by the president of the proclamation, was withdrawn. And I see you have some stuff maybe I can read, maybe sure. you can share with the, me. The understanding that you have, though, is it may be opinion, but it's not factual. And that's what we're trying to do, and that's what I'm mm -hmm. trying to present to you today, is what the facts are. But it has the exact, change the facts, you change the outcome, right? You change the circumstance like that. Has, for this area, for the activities being done, has it been proven in court for this exact area? It doesn't have to be. Well, it's then, just, then it's, it, let, it's me always you, be our, let me right? give you an, an analogy. Do I have to go and prove in court that I have a right to bear a firearm? No, or vote. because, uh, or vote, or things like that, because it's a fundamental right. There's a big difference between what's called a right and a privilege. A privilege is something that well, we're going very basic. Trust me, I, I, I do have it. Okay, you know, I do have an education. I, I'm not <laughs> trying to bemoan you, sir. Let's, I, let's that, fast forward to, you know, but, but and I, I, let's, let, let's go. Let to me, the, if I could just finish, Mr. Marcus, then you can just correct. definitely go on to that. The difference between a right and a privilege, when it pertains to mining claims, is that this is something that was passed by Congress, it was ratified, and it was signed into law by the President of the United States. It becomes a fundamental right. It's a it's a law. It's a right. right. Hikers, hunters, people that walk up the canyon, they have privilege to use the public domain. We have a fundamental right as mining claim owners and as miners to go and get the valuable minerals out of the ground. This is not withdrawn under PL 359 or anything else. But it is by the Presidential Proclamation under the Antiquities Act 1908. Would you agree that the language does say withdrawn? No, I no. don't. Not at no. all. It doesn't Definitely. say that? No. no. Doesn't no, no because it, it says withdrawn except for it won't step on any other rights. Exists certain existing, existing rights. rights. The right. 1872 Mining Act 
predates anything that he has done in 1908. It predates 1897 when the United States Forest Service was founded. It's 1905. 18, I'll bet you a thousand dollars. Well, I can't I bet just, you, but 1905 <laughs> is the year the force was created. All right. That is not, it's 1897. Okay, the, there was, this is just trivia. <laughs> <laughs> it's one you're going to lose on that one. I Department of Interior, all right, it was a forest bureau, all right. Gifford Pinchot in 1896 went westward and explored the, the what do you call it, the forest reserves. It's 1897. Right. We just went through that with the Clearwater National Forest up there. And well, I, we can I, do a gentleman's bet on it. I'll do, yeah, I'll, I don't drink. <laughs> <laughs> if I get, I'll bet you root beer. Well, not, not even any <laughs> 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 But uh, 1905, uh, this is a little trivia for you. It's actually, what you're thinking of, I think, is 1906, but the 1897 is... Anyway, and I have that documentation in my truck, Read it so on Facebook and yeah. minor <laughs> communication. Well, Facebook doesn't count. <laughs> no, no, he'll publish, he'll publish. <laughs> <laughs> that 1872 I laws, I mean, that, all those laws... So can, can I take a look at some of these? Oh, sure. Well, that's just a... Look in the folder itself. That's just a, a newspaper article you're Did you bring here. anything, Jeff? I did bring some. As but even in that one, it specifically says that they're going to allow payment. I don't know what and all the of this stuff is, so. It's all... I can um, show it. You know, I've been coming up here before you were born. <laughs> and why don't you enforce these graffiti problems? I the speeding yeah, racers up here. Why pick on the miners? I'm not picking. I'm talking to you, right? Well, now, yeah. generally you said, well... If this, if that. Just off my hand or anything mm. like that. That's not me. That's not my character. And I, mm. you know, I deal with a lot of guns, drugs, so alcohol, graffiti, criminals, everything else. Here's a shoe. Yeah, guys, let's focus on what we're here. Yeah, Barry, come and have a seat with us. Barry's from field people. people. 1906. Come on in. Thank you. Bring my yeah, antiquity, Matt. Here's your executive <laughs> order that's discussing national monuments. But see, I guess that going back to the same thing, officer, is that it has to do with the, the, he can't, it's just like he can't pass any executive orders. It's like Mr. Obama could not come out and pass an executive order or sign an executive action that say, okay, you have to turn in all your guns now, or you don't have the right, right. to free speech anymore well, because it's a right, it's a constitutional right. That's the same thing as the Mining Act, and I think that's where a lot of people get confused. This is Wikipedia. Is this they Wikipedia. don't, I don't either, <laughs> is they don't understand what a mining right is. And that's why I was trying to explain the difference between a privilege and a right by using hikers and hunters and things like that. Because it is something that is, you know, brought up in the House, it was passed by Congress, it was ratified, and it was signed by the President. Then it becomes law. And it's also been challenged all the way up through the Supreme Court. So there's no other challenges, legal challenges, that can be made to the actual mining right itself. So that's why when he does this proclamation and he says, oh yeah, it will withdraw this, that applies to everybody else except for the miners because they have that fundamental right. Well, once again, you know, all, all these things are decided by the courts and the ultimate decisions. It's been decided by the court, though. That's what I'm saying is it's been decided all the way through the Supreme Court. Then why would he put in the proclamation that... It was withdrawn from locating any of these things. If, 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 if you it, read the language, I, he doesn't. I, I, yeah, go I'm ahead. I'm asking, okay. why would he put that if, if, it, if it wasn't there and he didn't have the power to do it? Do you want to get he into does political? Whatever he does. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> not talking, we're talking specifically about this executive order. And this is just this. Once again, mm. this is me and you talking. We're, we're not. And this is all of us talking. Yeah. All right. This yeah. is educational. Sure. And this isn't right. confrontational. And no. We already had that happen this morning. <laughs> well, right. I think but, that you could a, make the argument. Why does the EPA feel that they can regulate a ditch on your own? private property it's an overstepping of authority is what it is and it's they've had their ass handed to them by like the endangered species act up on the uh Klamath, right that superseded the mining laws for no, that that court case no, right? With it, the no that, that's not that. that's not true either um and, and i mean we could sit here and debate the Karuk case for no, probably I, two I'm just hours sometimes law does supersede pre-existing law would you agree no, unless it's in writing. No, I agree to a certain extent what you're saying. Right. Yes, there are certain examples, but I don't right. think that is, a, is an example of that particular right. issue. And how far are you guys are you guys moving forward with your, your, your case, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. January 20th was on next hearing. Okay. Well, yeah. that's on the the, the right. suction oh, dredge that's case. Oh, that's, that's your issue with the state. Yeah. <laughs> right. But... Um, you know, the, the other things is, once again, the activities, the, the offering for 
that's in large group gatherings, which it doesn't look really have as many people as I thought. Large group gathering will require a permit, the raffle, offering sales and services, even membership drives, those kind of things will require a permit. Some where have, where do you have any documentation of that? Because I'm we need code I'm, numbers. Well, I'm, the, well, I'm, I'm sitting here yes, I'm I'm on on the and, Dale and asked them. I talked What's to them extensively. I talked to Glenn Dale's uh, Forest Service, and, the, she, and I told okay. them exactly what was going on. The woman that's raffle? answering the phone. I went through the whole thing with her, and she said, "There's no problem." Who, who did you speak to? The young lady that answers the phone, because we okay. had a question about using the uh, charcoal up here. So okay. I had her the on charcoal one existing barbecues. You're going to be okay. You don't want to have your, your wood fire or your charcoal fire Correct. except for in stoves provided. And that's what you're really understanding. Okay. Um, she said absolutely we can have a function here. There's no problem. Okay, you said a function. All right. So this if we is use a the, if we ter use the term, we're going to have a raffle. We're going to have a large group gathering, or we're going to have 75 people. I can go right. to any place on public land and have a raffle. Can I, I go um, to the beach? The beach, everybody has a raffle because it's not. It's it's that's something that's, that's not an exchange. Of okay. so no, he's going to get us a code number that says because we you, can. you have certain things like like um, when certain things like games of chance and things like that for that certain things are. Um, but that's gambling. Hold, hold Same on. thing uh, as an hold on. Let me let me. You can cut me off, sir. Okay. Okay. Let me now let him finish. But uh, certain things are regulated by the state, but certain activities on the forest are regulated by the forest service. Would you agree? Certain activities, yeah, I such have as some input offering on. for sale or those things. And when you have a raffle, you're offering goods for sale. Well, I and I understand what you're saying. You actually a pretty compelling argument. I right. would I give you credit yeah, for that. So that's some that's but we don't do that. The difference right? being is that now I'm the president of a 501c3 okay. not for profit. Okay. The only way that we actually make any type of um, finance. <laughs> Uh, right. income is through donations right. and it would be fundamentally illegal for you to tell me that whether or not I'm on public lands that I cannot receive a donation from somebody that wants to fund our business. Donations would be a little bit different. Okay. That's exactly what they are doing is these people are giving us donations okay. and in return we have a drawing and they might win a really nice prize. Well, we, we could change the semantics. But no, 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 it's not. But I, and the reason I bring that up, um, officer, is that we've gone down the legal road because it took me two years to get a freaking 501c3 right. thing through the IRS. Because when you have a, a name like Rights in your name, right. you, the IRS didn't right. like that. Oh, I hear you. So there's, but there's <laughs> ways, and I'm not trying to say that we circumvented the right. law, but we did look at the legality. We can have a drawing all we want. We can give away nuts and rocks and squirrel feathers or whatever the heck it is, it doesn't make any difference. The simple fact from a legal standpoint, if you want to give me a $5 donation to support AMRA, which by the way, if you want to, we would accept that, <laughs> we would give you a chance to win a draw, you know, win a nice prize in a drawing. It's not a raffle. Okay. And if you look at the, I understand, We're offering but goods see, I'm getting around, I'm not offering any kind of a goods. Or services. Goods or services. If you're, no, if you're presenting an item, right? You, you have to understand from a, a legal perspective, what is the law going to interpret? And that's exactly what we do. Well, how about we not get into that? <laughs> and if you take your donations and whatever, but if you, as soon as you have a raffle. It's um, not a raffle. Well, that's what it's described as on the website. Well, I don't know about that because that isn't our website. Uh, I'm completely separate. And so if our 501c3 decides right. to have a drawing today, I'm going to still do that. Okay, um, so based why don't we on go donations. look at the, or you, I can go grab my CFR sure. book and I'll show you the thing, sure. and it's not considered unconstitutionally vague, um, because that one's been tested, sure. but basically. I have a copy of all of your regulations okay. in my truck, too. Right, and so if, you know, the, if that's gonna be, you know, the, the biggest hiccup with us, then we really don't have much of a hiccup at all. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, even nonprofits, have to have permits for certain things. So if the Boy Scouts of America want to have something, yeah. they take camping fees and everything else is said, well, it's a donation. They're offering goods or services, right? And that, that CFR is uh, put there so basically people don't do commercial, even non-commercial activities on the force without a permit. And generally the reason why they want a permit is to make sure people insure it and it's, things are fundamentally fair. The, you know what's really interesting is we work obviously quite a bit with the Forest Service. Um, We've even had some pretty serious issues. I'm sure you've heard about the taser incident up in the Stanislaus National Forest. I've heard, and I, you know, it's it's hard to 
you know, read but, from one to another. Right, and I'm not or, here to rehash that, right. but we have worked very closely, not only with um, with the captain and with uh, Commander Wares right. and, you know, a lot of different people on down the line here, and we like to try to keep that relationship really good. Right. The, scene, the thing that we seem to, to see, and I'm not pointing this at you, is that the Forest Service seems to forget a lot of times that they work for the public and that they manage our public lands. And there, there just seems to be really so much pushback against everybody anymore that they just don't want to let them go out and enjoy their own public lands. Well, how about, uh, you know, sometimes when I look at that, you know, people say, you know, I, you know your backup's here. <laughs> so some, sometimes... Sit down. Uh, like I think she wants to get your back from back okay. there in case oh, one of us goes elsewhere, right? Yeah. <laughs> he needs to produce those CFs. That so you can't have. A, you can't have a raffle. I'll bet you they're not in there. Just can't call it a raffle. I'm very weather Call it a giveaway. How are you? Our club calls them drawings. Yeah. 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 Well, that's the main thing. Yeah. I'll bet you that raffle's not in the CFR. I didn't say I was going to take a slope that we don't. We don't have any. She's going to grab the CFR. But um, so we were talking about uh, you know, like uh, public sort of public service. Quiet down, quiet down. Quiet down. Sometimes see people, uh, you know, and I, I get this. You know, somebody I'll, I'll write somebody a speeding ticket. They give me. 50 miles over speed limit. It's like, you know, I pay my, your salary, sure. this and that, and, you know, you're supposed to be serving the public. But when we look at the public, the public is a mass of the whole United States population, citizens, non-citizens, visitors, and everything else. And when we look at serving the public, it's the general public, right? And sometimes we have, you know, different interests. So someone, everyone always points other fingers and say, oh, they're a special interest group, they're a special interest group, right? And then we're stuck in the middle as this, you know, public entity. And I try never to forget that, you know, land of many uses. It's a land of many abuses, right? Just land was made for you and me, right? Right, there we go. <laughs> and so, you know, I always try to bring in context, and I do try to educate myself and things like that. But, uh, you know, and that's uh, when we get into the, the struggle of, you know, certain people's rights and everything else, you know, most officers, you know, 99% don't go out there intentionally violating people's rights. I agree. And I then, agree. Yeah. then, you know, what happens often on a contact, everybody thinks they're a lawyer. Both sides. It's like, well, it says you can't do this, it says you can't do this. But some of us but, actually have a background in litigation. So. Okay. Right. But if I look at things, and that's why I'm sitting down instead of saying, if you guys do this, I'm going to write tickets, which I never made that statement, right? Right. And I, well, I thought you did, but maybe for, as, far as, as far as mining, locating, prospecting, any of that kind of activity, as far as anything with the, the natural features, right? If I saw somebody damaging a natural feature by blasting, obviously I'm going to write a citation. Yeah. Right? If I saw somebody cutting down a tree, yeah. right, and, or vandalizing a tree, then I'm going to write a ticket, right? But I haven't made any kind of threats on you know, and that's, or anything like that. That's completely understandable. We, understand we wouldn't that. allow that right. to happen either. Yeah, yeah. we're not like that. Right. We're actually it, clean people. We we pick up our trash behind us and make sure it's cleaner than it was. Right. Oh, absolutely. Leave. Someone's already talking about you know got a trash bag full of. Um, I wish other people were like that. Right. But you know, um, it's all about education as much as you can give them. Right. You know? But uh, when when I you know have people saying oh, you know I'm going to do it anyway, sometimes we have to take enforcement action. Sure. And that's probably understandable. You know, and that that's well. Eventually, that's it's going to come down to that. Unless we can win it in court, we'll come up here with X number of people. You'll arrest X number of people, and we'll get some publicity out of it. Well, I'm sure he's talking about other things. But well, let's get back to what we were just talking mining. About. Yeah. Um, so, I guess your your primary issue today would be just the raffle. Yeah, because I don't think we're going to have over 75 people, and then you know I am concerned about campfires because sometimes you know we, 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 have we don't we, we know about we don't understand the and so. Um, you know, all the basic things that you guys normally take care of, which are most of any things that I deal with the general public, I'm not going to have to deal with, right? And those are the sanitation issue, which we're not going to have a problem. The fire issue, we're not going to have a problem. The illegal parking, which you guys already got the best parking spots anyway. So it's like, you know, we, we're not going to have. That's what I was going to ask about the parking. Um, we do have to have a permit, right? Is that um, what you're saying for, for today? I do not. Okay, the Adventure Pass is another thing that's, you know, Ninth Circuit and litigation. I'm not going to uh, okay. be enforcing 
the recreational fee for a person to parking. Right, got money for five bucks this morning. Well, I, I'm just telling off. you that's not that's not my concern. <laughs> All right. All right. So uh, yeah. if I'm going to look up this uh, one. We should get some legal advice on the, that. that the problem that you guys have is with, with all of these. I, I know you guys carry these books and stuff. Oh, good God, there's no way I can read that without my glasses. I'm not that old yet, but it's like selling or offering for sale any merchandise or conducting any kind of work activity or service unless authorized by federal law regulation or special use authorization. Well, I tell you what, I, and rather than arguing the semantics right. over this, because um, I, I, I firmly disagree right. with you, and, and you know what, it's just not even right. worth it, it's not a big deal. We're right. not here to puff up our chest right. and say, oh, we're going to do this, and right. force it. it just doesn't, yeah. I would rather work with <laughs> right. you than work against you, so if you are firm in, a, in that you right. don't want us to have a, a drawing, Right. Uh, with donations, then you know what? That's fine. Because that's not the big. Right. That's not the thing. The reason that we are here today is in opposition to an executive action right. that doesn't grant them the authority to close this down from somebody going down and putting a pan in the water. That's the reason that we're here, and or we will, or and we will mine today. That is just going no, to you happen. You will prospect so. today. Prospect. Right. Prospect. Yeah. So well, he's in general very direction. careful. But, well, that's uh, what it is. Um, prospect. But you know, once again, uh, you know, I'm not going to be writing any tickets for that. All right, I'm just going to take note. I'm going to watch. I'm going to observe. Everything else. It's not saying I'm condoning. It, all right, is, is that fair? Sure. Mm -hmm. Right. And so what I'm going to observe, and if I see significant resource damage. We'll talk and I'll identify that individual. Have you and ever seen the, I didn't mean to interrupt you, have you ever seen that the, there's a multitude of cases out there that talk about significant right, resources? Right, the district ranger would have to do the actual evaluation and everything else. All but it's also the miner's, miner's responsibility also. to come forward to the district ranger right. to determine that he is creating a significant right. disturbance. So if it's me, I'm the one that has to come forward to the district ranger and go, hey, I think what I'm doing here might cause a significant disturbance, right. which, by the way, has been proven in court that it can't be caused by hand tools. So, once again, that's probably not activity we're going to see, right? Exactly. So we're not we bringing in a backhoe or anything. Right. But I'm saying if I saw it, I would, ask that, I would ask that the person cooperate. But see, I think that that's where the Forest that. Service, and we've heard this in all of the Western right. states, is that they have a tendency to say, oh, you need a plan of operations for this, without, understand, without understanding what the procedure is in order to get a plan of operations or to require a plan of operations. It's the prospector or the miner or the mining claim owner. It's their responsibility, and that's where the responsibility lies, to come forward to the ranger. It's not vice versa. The ranger doesn't get to go, Would you say hey, if we, we saw something, which we're not going to see, if we saw something you would expect me to... To yeah, sure, hey, if somebody brings a backhoe in here and starts right? ripping up the side right. of the mountain, or hey, someone, a somebody, that's a little different, right. Right. but yeah. we're not Dynamite. talking so about we're, that. We're probably not going to have that, so we don't We're, we're not talking about, about, about something about it. like that. We won't. Yeah. But see, that's the thing, is, and in, in you obviously have read enough that you know, it's the lack of definition for a lot of these things that is really causing the problems. Where's the definition of what a significant disturbance is? And remember that can't be delegated except for the district ranger. So they would have to do a study, a, a damage assessment, and say, "Help, oh, that's significant damage." But I mean, I, I mean, come on, I came from the Eldorado. I've never seen significant damage. Not well, well, it's not. not no, it's not exactly. Significant damage. What? It's significant disturbance. Disturbance. I'm sorry. Let's use my term. But I've never seen it. And I came from a place, you know, yeah. I worked over on the Georgetown Divide. I worked over on the Amador. I worked. I, I've never seen. It. Look what Mother Nature just did. Uh, oh, the flood. With a little flood yeah. there, right? Yeah. Yeah. See, that you look at the color of this water down here, and you go down with somebody in a pan, or they're using a shovel, or even a pick, or they're you even know excavating out anything, and that surface, that plume that is created from there is only going to go downstream maybe 100 feet. Well, let's let you get to having your fun, everything else. I appreciate you spending time with me. Yes. Like that. I didn't get your name on this Gene. Gene. Yeah, I'm Barry Weather. I'm Shannon. Hi, Barry. Pleasure. Public land. I'm Chuck Dunn. Shannon. Shan I have five copies of that. They can have that if they want. Okay. Oh, that's um, that's on the. Uh, oh, thank you, sir. I don't have a business card because I've uh, been too lazy. To that's get all right. It. We got you. We know who you are. <laughs> <laughs> um, You're a very nice person, nice and nice I care. appreciate you sitting down and talking with us. That was very cool. Yeah. Very nice of you to do that. Thank you. We appreciate yeah. that. So, uh, yeah. yeah, I'm the, the guy that got the 
Forest Service LEOs kicked out of Mariposa County. Oh. Well, they you know. remember this though. If you're if you have a state issue and uh, something, you call for an LEO, and they might go, "Oh, sorry, I can't you deal with it." Well, share. the problem, and that's, <laughs> that's not okay. the case. Some of our I best mean, friends, some of my personal about. best friends, work for the Forest Service. They're firefighters. And, right. that's exactly uh, as a matter of fact, Lee, the guy that the sheriff, tanker truck Mariposa that rolled over a couple of times yeah. about three months ago. Oh, the, yeah, the Lee. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. really a very close friend. He's a mining buddy. The guy owns a mining river, dude. This is done. Come on. But anyway. Yeah, we've had uh, sheriffs, husband and wife teams up here dredging with us in the past, and you know, all that kind of doctors, lawyers. Remember, uh, dredging is a state issue, not not <laughs> yeah, yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. It's so sad, and I think that's why people are so wired up. It's so sad that that the state is illegally shutting us down. We have federal preemption, according to Judge Ochoa, already on an order that says what the state is doing. But that's not these guys. It's a scam. You know, I think and, probably and, that, and, how, how did that happen? It, it probably happened that somebody tried to sue the, the fish and game and said, hey, you're allowing yeah. habitat to be destroyed. And then yeah. scientists oh, from both sides. Yeah, it was an that got mad at us. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, 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 but sometimes that's how you know, organizations woman. get, how laws come. That someone says, you're not doing something. Yeah. You better regulate it. But what's, and, what, what's sad is, to this day, what they accuse us of, we they haven't do. got one documented proof that anything that they said was done. Right. Yeah. Point one million dollars later in attorney fees, right. we're still at something that we have a, a right, not a privilege, it's a right to, make a to lot do. But we see a lot less lawsuits, right? Let me ask you a question. If you were, let's say that you came up to the river here and you saw a couple of elderly folks sitting down there in the creek. And it's already been determined that they can uh, prospect and they can run a sluice box, they can pan and all those kind of things. What's the Forest Service policy on going up and, and asking for ID on folks like that? Okay, now we're talking about a specific situation, mm -hmm. right? And so I always, you know, if I give this blanket answer. Well, but you, I know your probable cause laws. I know the statute number and I know what it says specifically in there is that you guys are being trained that you have to have probable cause in order to initiate an investigation. Yeah. No, reasonable suspicion is the... Okay, reasonable yeah. suspicion. Right, right. Um, but what, at yeah, what exactly point right. do you get to where it prompts that you're requiring to ask for ID? Well, if you had probable cause to make an arrest, right? Which is probably would that, would violation. that justify would uh, two people, old people sitting in a creek well, to like any that? People. Would, well, let me finish. But see, we... we, we your perspective. I'm not let's, trying to trap you. Instead, me, instead, I'm not. instead of mining, let's say they had a campfire, because because once again the d dispute the dispute is prospecting, mining, locating all the, all those different things. If we change the, the what, what the subject matter is, which we believe the violation was, all right, because you're disputing if I saw them mining and then you're prospecting. Yes. Sorry, we'll use your term. You. Uh, mining is, a, is when you have but, a mining claim. But we'll, we'll, we'll use it for, for this yeah. purpose, we say prospecting. We'll, we'll use that. But if, that's what's being disputed here, whether it's legal or not legal. Well, here, sure, here, I understand. Right? Yes. But it, if you, you were to change the scenario to um, you saw a different kind of violation, at what level can I demand ID or things like that? Well, what well, I was trying to do is to give you a scenario. Is this, this where the LEOs came and parked their truck was underneath the two foot by 18 inch federal oh, so mining claim about, sign. So you're I'm talking, talking about, about specific the example. Yes. So I'm not going to give my opinion. No, I'm not asking that. for your right. opinion. I'm asking for what your regulations state. I'm just validating because I. We've obviously studied the USFS, all of your, the manuals that you guys are required to follow and the laws that you're required to enforce. Those are the things that we've studied. Let me just tell you this, is this, this is what happened, is that the LEOs came up and parked underneath the federal mining claim sign. It, they knew it was a valid mining claim. Um, and there were elderly folks literally sitting in the creek with a little tiny spoon putting sand in a sluice box. They came up, demanded ID, and when they refused to show ID, they pulled a taser and pointed at the face of the old people that were sitting in the creek. So my question is this, and I'm not trying to say you guys are all evil. I think we have just a certain rogue element to a couple of people. But at what point do you get that that probable cause uh, is met where you, know, you can go up, it's okay if you have 
suspicion of a crime being committed is about to be committed or has been committed and you have fundamental um, reasons why you believe that it meets that criteria I don't see anything like that in here if, if this was a federal mining claim and I was sitting down there on a rock putting material into a sluice box with a spoon well, I will not comment and, uh, just because one uh, I, I, I'm not going to comment on uh, an action sure. that happened. Sure. So, I'm not getting. Right. I'm not asking right. you to try to so, bury these. So guys. I wouldn't sit there and say, "Oh, probable cause does exist, doesn't exist." So in that, in that mm. situation, I, I'm not going to comment on that one. So, but if I if I change the situation, yeah. you know, and said I had two people and they had a campfire and they refused to present ID, then they technically would be arrested. They could be booked we to provide that, that identification. So I'm not going to talk about sure. you know one, especially you know um, one that happened where it did happen or what happened with that situation when I wasn't there. Can I ask you a, a personal question? How long have you been in LEO? Uh, since 2007. Oh. Right. Okay. I, got, you know, I want to apologize if any of those guys up there did math off, but what probable we'll, we'll, cause we'll, was We'll there talk for... about that in a, in a second. I'll talk to you offline on that. Right? Okay. Well, I kind of want to, I'm curious because you probably got that response because they weren't doing anything wrong. So where was the probable cause? Okay. Even well, address that would be you still, have to, you still have to have respect the, for the law. The, 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 yeah. there's, there's privacy issues, so I won't, I won't discuss it. Okay, no, because I don't think anybody should be problem off like that. And, and if there is someone that we'd like to let them know that that's not how we... Well, no, you know, in yeah. the, you know, obviously you guys are very passionate about what you do. It's obviously more than just a hobby. It's a little bit of a lifestyle, especially, and it's a little bit of a, and a, a right. cause. It's the big right? part is the well, right. Yeah, and that's, that's the thing, and, uh, you know. That's uh, how know, I make my like, living. You know, yeah. I'm, yeah. A, I'm a OHVer. You know, I like OHVs, but I don't like OHVers breaking the law. And some people, will, well, we're not really breaking the law. Well, I don't believe in man's law or things like that. Or, um, you know, I, I'm a gun enthusiast. And people will sit there and say, well, how can you enforce California law that you don't think is fundamentally fair? It's like because I look at we elect our legislator, and legislators make the laws. I can't agree with every law, and so it's sort of that uh, we go back to that uh, idea of uh, you know the, uh, the social contract we make with the We live under the protection of the government. Sometimes we get rights, and certain rights you know are limited or restricted, and you know nobody does that. I spent 11 years in America, and you know, all people, some people sit there and say, you know, I, you know, my cousin, uncle's nephew served in this and this and this. It's like, well, you know, I served in most of you know, a good portion of thank my you other for people. Your thank you. I appreciate that. And, uh, you know, so I'm not out here to intentionally violate anybody's rights. I'm not out here to, you know, cause people problems. I'm here to, you know, do the job I was hired to in the best manner I can. Well, and guys, and I, I will, talk. you know, it's, we deal a lot with good and bad for right. service, and I, I, will admit is that you're probably one of the most reasonable people that we've dealt with and I, I agree that you have a fundamental um, right to come up and see what's going on anytime you have a gathering it was posted on Facebook obviously it caught the attention of the Forest Service so I don't really have a problem with that the only time that we ever really have a problem is when it oversteps the authority that the Forest Service has. I don't see that you've done that today, and I don't know. No, and that's, don't know. you know, and often that's a person's opinion. Nobody likes getting a ticket. No one likes being brought into court. But also, the place to argue things is court. That's our, our part of our social contract. If I write somebody a ticket for speeding, I don't think they're speeding. And the place to argue that is often court. Yeah. And well, we can always ask for a warning, right? We can always do those things. But then, you know, I see a lot of people, or not necessarily see, but I encounter quite a few people who just think that. I'm wasting their time that I shouldn't do these things. And, uh, you know, I don't think, I, I don't go pick that. Not, not what we do. Part of the problem that I think that you guys have as far as a real challenge is that there's so much stuff in litigation and there's so much changes and things that go through the Ninth Circuit or the Eighth Circuit or the Supreme Court in that I'm sure that you guys don't go home on the weekends and spend all your weekend researching
Well, we just got up here, and uh, the Forest Service is already here with their cop, so we're going to go talk to him. Unless it's written somewhere in your documentation that says, and, and I'm not talking policy. You can go on the Pet Forest Service thing all through. Right. They've had that for years saying that we can't do it. We've made them take their signs down or we're going to sue them. And they knew that what they did was wrong by spending $800 on taxpayers' money to say that we can't pan when in fact we can't. Well, let's move forward to the withdrawal with the, with the presidential proclamation. What okay. is, is that your understanding? Well, we're, we're still under study. We have three years of study to go through that. That's for the uh, monument plan, but as soon as the proclamation went in effect, it didn't help me understand. Well, I'm, okay. if I could interject here, and this is this is what, what we do is, okay. I'm the president of America. Would you want to sit down? I'm sure. If you you want. can all go sit down yeah, instead of standing around. I mean, I'm not sure you're probably kind of warm in that. Oh, no. This is everyday work. <laughs> the, um, now we're not going to get in trouble if we start sitting down and about 75 people come around. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not going to today. I am here to do education and violation prevention. Is that fair enough? That's fair. I also I'll support cops very much. Well, the president's proclamation. Correct. Well, executive order. Guys, we're going to have to do it one at one at a time talking here. I'll talk that's, to you. That's fine. No, no, we were talking, so if you want to come, because he said he's pretty familiar. And what I'm trying to do is get briefed on your understanding. Sure. And then the, there is one caution now. I'm going to ask that you not do the raffle here or any kind of solicitation of donations here. You can do that off-site because you, that anytime you offer services or um, sell things, you need a permit. Right? So that, well, when you offer stuff, you have a code for that. The raffle is yeah, it's totally legal. Hey, guys, guys, the, uh, yeah, hold on. Individual we code. can't have five or ten people. Well, I've got, I've got all the time. I got all the time in the world for you guys. All right. So, well, but that's. I'm just trying to tell our guys. So maybe we can go sit down at the picnic tables. Okay, that's fine. But if we could just, I mean, all the questions will be answered, guys. It's just going to be a lot more difficult if we can't engage in a conversation. It's very, very low key, and I'm normally on the north side of the forest. Uh, you know, the big thing is also, uh, you, you notice the little lock lamps that people do for stream alteration, and it gets that water wheel murky. That's our biggest. Well, but that's thing I see. see over that's, here. that's not you, you guys don't do that because you want the water flow. But um, yeah, this we place don't put the dirty diapers in the water. Yeah, this either. place can be hacked from here all the way oh, down to the, the, the fire. Camp. Well, I would think that that's a matter of interpretation as far as whether that's even classified as stream alteration. I mean, I understand what you're saying, right. but. It's a little wobbly, isn't it? Well, I'm sorry. Maybe somebody sit up that end a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> um, why don't we go? I, I don't want to end up on my yeah. <laughs> 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 